but it's nice and chewy. There's texture. Mm -hmm. Outside is delicate. Inside is like juicy and crunchy. Yeah. I love the flavor. Yes. And the textures. Yeah. Of this dumpling. It's perfectly flavored. What is it called? Oh, we should ask John. <laughs> this right. is the hack out. Hog out. Look at that. So this is everybody's classic favorite. And you one. always dip it with a little bit of latu germ or hot mm -hmm. sauce. So this one is with chive. I'm gonna try it. Mm. My dad used to teach me to eat, um, mix the mustard mm. and the chili paste. I was born in the Philippines. <laughs> so I moved here when I was 21 yeah. with the family. My grandparents always tell me that you are the only son, so whatever your dad wishes you to do, just help him. I guess so when we first arrived, we didn't know what we can do. And he mentioned something. I, uh, let's try to go to a, 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 a food business or restaurant, something like that. With food prices skyrocketing, can we still get a delicious meal in Vancouver on a shoestring budget? Join us as we visit some of the most delicious yet overlooked and Michelin-worthy restaurants in Vancouver. Be the first to find out about these hidden gems before everyone else hears about them. My name is Amelie Tuina Nguyen. I'm a restaurateur, mom of two, and I love to gather and amplify positive stories. My family and I created an award-winning restaurant in Vancouver, and I would love to see more heirloom recipes shared and showcased around the world. I am Trudy Tran. I am a self-proclaimed foodie who is always in search of my next great meal. This pursuit has led me to many great adventures. I've eaten everything from street food vendors to Michelin star restaurants across the globe. And now I'm ready to showcase what Vancouver has to offer. We are both on a journey to find local neighborhood gems with delicious eats and human stories and connection behind the food. We'll travel through struggles and triumphs behind Vancouver's hidden food scene. Watch, follow, subscribe, and share. I love how you're taking me to a new neighborhood now. Yes, Kipsalano. yes. Kipsalano? Yes, you said you wanted dim sum with wine pairing or beer pairing. So yes. I've taken you to Little Bird in Kits. Dim sum and craft beer. I love it. OK, let's do it. Let's do it. See you again. I want to Hi. introduce you to my friend Amelie. Nice to, nice meet, to you. meet you. This I'm is Amelie. Jonathan. Jonathan. Nice to meet you. I really like your restaurant. Thank it you. It's so cute from the outside. Thank what, you very much. What does Little Bird mean? Well, we're trying to pay homage to my grandfather and my father. Uh, they own and have run Flamingo Restaurant. Yeah. So uh, Little Bird, uh, Flamingo is a big bird. Yes. So this is oh, Little wow. Bird. So it's like a sister or brother restaurant, you can say? That's right. So cute, and congratulations on your Michelin Bib Grimond. Thank you, it was a complete surprise for us. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. Jonathan, thank you so much for inviting us here today. You know, I, for as long as I remember, you know, as a kid, we used to go to the one on Fraser Street, and that is a very fond memory of Sunday for me. And I remember your dim sum tasting so good. So today, you know, we're, we're so honored to be able to come to your restaurant, Little Bird, and be able to pay homage to Flamingo. Oh. So yeah, <laughs> the real OG. The real the OG. gangster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how, tell us your background. I, I want to go way back. I yes. was born in the Philippines. Oh. So I moved here when I was 21 yeah. with the family. Yeah. My grandparents always tell me that you are the only son, so whatever your dad wishes you to do, just help him. I guess so when we first arrived, we didn't know what we can do. And he mentioned something, I, uh, let's try to go to a, 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 a food business or restaurant, something like that. So I went into hotel and restaurant management at PCIT. And then I worked for uh, a and and Eaton's. And then over the experience of two years, I started the Flamingo wow. with my dad. With your, dad. with your dad. This is like 
third like, generation. Yeah, it's third generation. Third generation. Oh. But I remember you had the prawn dumpling with the one ton wrapper deep fried and the perfect sweet and sour That's sauce. Right. And no other place, like first, no other place had dim sum. And then second is no other place could replicate that dish. Yes. Even after many years later, I yeah. still pray for that oh, dish. I still have. Can you bring them. it back? I still have it in. Uh, We'll, we'll, do, we'll do it for special occasions. Yeah. Oh, special occasions. Tell us about your background and why why the move into the food and um, food. So and yeah, I I don't have a culinary background, but I do spend a lot of time eating. So for yes. twenty about twenty years of my career, I, I travel for work, I help clients out, and I'm always eating out. We came up with a diet, Aichi, not purely my idea, but it was an idea that we came up together about, my dad had this idea of an all day dim sum and I always had an idea of pairing, you know, our traditional dim sum with beer and wine and that's how we came up with this concept. So I can't take full credit for it, nor uh, can I take full credit for everything. It was, you know, a full group activity, you know, from support from my wife, uh, my sister-in-law coming up with the idea of, you know, we need to have um, dishes that support the, you know, the, the ever-changing desire for vegan or vegetarian food. And everyone had a point and brought it in and we kind of pulled this idea together. And, and, and you get to work on like a common goal together. How does it feel? I guess it accomplished my father's dream to have a family together all the time, which at the moment I'm still very communicating with all my sisters and family. Mm. So, uh, and then, uh, now my kids are together again with me, which is the best thing that can happen. And you have a successful career outside of the restaurant business. You know, you've obviously you've got big clients and you know, you help consult businesses and help them move up to the next level. How has that kind of changed the scope of things for you when you're running this restaurant? I, I think it, I, we add a lot. Like, my, I still do that job, so I yeah. still have a day job, and I call this my night job. <laughs> so my day job wow. still runs all day long, and sometimes in the evening, but that actually has helped me build confidence. Because a lot of times I, I work in industries, sometimes it's been food and beverage. I don't know a lot about the industry, so what that has given me is confidence, is going into a restaurant and feeling confident that I can do this. The thing that probably, probably my dad hasn't mentioned is, you know, one of the reasons that we're still in business is a promise. Like my grandfather had a dream. He really wanted to, you know, be successful in bringing Chinese food to Vancouver. Like that was one of his dreams. And, you know, he, he's no longer with us, uh, but one of his promises that my dad made to him is he would continue Flamingo, right? Mm. Uh, and. And one of the reasons he's done that is around our employees. Of Some of them have been with us forever. Actually, one of our cooks in there, her husband got off the plane, didn't know what he was going to do, met my grandfather and his employee. Yeah. And you know, his wife you know, actually worked for Flamingo and was looking for a job again. I opened here, and now she's working for Little Bird. Amazing. Uh, amazing. So it's one of the things my dad has promised is like, we will continue to open Flamingo to make sure the employees that have been with us for 40 something years will continue to have work um, until they're ready to retire. But during like the times where it might have been a struggle, maybe during COVID, maybe before that, what are some of the sacrifices that you as a restaurateur had to endure? Of course, uh, you, you try to take time off with the children, which is uh, uh, with the family. So my whole idea is in the morning, I make sure I drive them to school and make sure at three o'clock I pick them up yes. and take them to some of the uh, YMCA swimming or soccer or tennis, yes. right? And then I come back to work and try to be there for dinner at least half an hour with them. Amazing. Yeah. Do you guys want a menu? We trust you. It's your place. Yeah. But I'll have some croissant and tea. Okay, sounds good. And a drink. Any drink. Any drink. I'll bring you some wine. Okay. Sounds good. Croissant and tea. Thank mm -hmm. you. And here is a glass of wine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
Cheers. Oh, you do. Cheers. Is that your favorite tea? It is neat. Yeah. Well, I like it at Chinese restaurants, yeah. We're going to bring you guys a tower of dim sum. Wow! wow. Uh, on okay, the bottom. First one is your chive and shrimp. Second one is a cilantro and shrimp. One in between, this is our traditional sumai wow. uh, with goji berry on top. Beautiful. And finally, our uh, hagao. Yum. Thank you. The hagao is always my forever favorite at dim sum. And uh, my kids' favorite and my favorite is our, actually our cha siu bao. Mm. Uh, uh, Ooh, this is I love our tasu barbecue bao. pork buns. So you said this is the most traditional? One yeah, this is go. very traditional. Okay, yeah. you take one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for dropping one off. Uh, this yeah. is our lo mai gai, our sticky mm. rice wrapped in lotus leaf and uh, classic uh, spring, spring roll. rolls. Mm. Mm. This is delicious. Mm. I like this actually. Very delicious. It's so good. Mm -hmm. But it's nice and chewy. There's texture. Mm -hmm. Outside is delicate. Inside is like juicy and crunchy. Yeah. I love the flavor yes. and the textures yeah. of this dumpling. It's perfectly flavored. What is it called? Oh, we should ask Jonathan. <laughs> this right. is the hagao. Look at that. So this is everybody's classic favorite. And you always dip it with a little bit of latzu germ or hot mm -hmm. sauce to make it delicious. I'm gonna try this one. Mmm. The prawn's very bouncy. Mm. The skin is got a nice chew to it. Mm. Good flavor. Mmm. And the perfect bite size. I don't like it with hagao's too big. This is the perfect size. Mmm. Okay. So this one is with chive. I'm going to try it. Mm. My dad used to teach me to eat, um, mix the mustard mm. and the chili paste. And it does complement dim sum really well. I wonder where it comes from. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, it, it's a very tough industry. Now, would you want your kids to follow in your footstep and, and take over this? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't think, like, I, as much as my dad, my dad really wanted us to set our own careers. And I, I, the same for my kids is to set their own careers and dreams. Like, I, growing up, I had never, no dreams of being a restaurateur, right? I had, I knew I always wanted to do business and technology. My brother wanted to always be a doctor. Um, my, my sister always had uh, aspirations to be uh, in silver service. So um, I will let them choose whatever they want to do, but I will be honest, like my dad told me, it's not easy. It is very difficult. And that same message, if my kids in the future want to get into a restaurant or open a restaurant, I will tell them truthfully how hard and how much time it takes to be successful. So, so Trudy tells me you have another level of like big thinking. You have a commissary kitchen besides besides your restaurant, and here you also have another business. That's another beast. No, well, right? the, the reason right? we were able to open Littlebird because yes. of the commissary. Oh, so tell so, us about this yeah. commissary. So it's a central kitchen. So we mm. have two restaurants, Flamingo and Littlebird. And the whole idea when we were doing this is to make sure it's scalable. Yeah, so we, we actually are working with select uh, uh, organizations to kind of provide dim sum to them. Uh, it's like co-branded uh, with their location and our restaurant. There are quite a few people that I reached out because they actually, not just through because we won an award, but actually they know Flamingo. Uh, and they, large organizations that, and these individuals have been big supporters of Flamingo since they were little kids. So they saw this and they're like, this is a perfect combination. We'd love to kind of co-brand and co-sell, so. So these are our vegetarian options. This oh. is our vegetarian uh, dumpling. I love it because there's, if you love corn, there's corn in there. Oh and this gosh. is our uh, plant-based plant uh, uh, siu mai, uh, which is again, uh, lots of mushrooms, little bits of tofu wow. in there. Enjoy. Thank you. I think food transcends time. I yes. think, you know, like, your, how your kids grow up is so different from how we grew up. Mm -hmm. You know, we had TV, they have iPads. We mm -hmm. went out to play, they're in some gym somewhere, you know, some fancy gym. But one thing that hasn't changed is that bowl of noodles that your daughters are eating today is the same bowl of noodles that have brought you comfort years ago. Mm -hmm. And same thing, you know, the dim sum that Jonathan's kids are eating today is the same dim sum that he ate 
years ago with his grandfather, and that has never changed. And I hope that some of these food items continue on so that, you know, the same love can be shared through generations. Well, thank you for making me leave my work. Oh, you're welcome. I'm going to eat. I you're always welcome. feel better after. Make sure you <laughs> like, like, watch, share, share and subscribe, subscribe to Manchester Michelin. Okay, see you next time.